Well, since uh, nobody's in the Zoom yet, I thought this would be a good time to talk about a little bit of Mendelian genetics when you're dealing with uh, more than one trait. So uh, this is another worksheet I have to sort of help step you into dihybrids. It's a dihybrids calculus. But anyway, um, for every one trait, remember we have two alleles. So there's two alleles for, for every one trait, right? Two versions of the gene. We're still talking about Mendelian, one gene, one trait, which we know is not really how it works, but probably. And then if you've got two traits, then uh, you would have twice as many traits, so you have twice as many alleles. Two traits would be four alleles. Three traits could be a trihybrid cross. That's going to be a, a nightmare, just like when you do trinomials, they're multiplying by each other, and it's a, yeah, no fun, but that would be six alleles, right? Two alleles per trait. So here, uh, right on the screen, this these are two common traits. You can actually look at yourself on your own hand. So you're looking at your hand, and if, you're, if your ring finger, like mine, your ring finger is longer than your index finger. See how mine is? The ring finger is longer than the index finger. If that's the case, then um, you have you have a, a dominant trait. So I've got the dominant version of this trait. And then there's also some people with a hitchhiker's thumb. So see my thumb just goes back a normal amount, but some people it goes like schlop, like in the like you see schlop, like in the picture here. All right, that is a recessive trait called hitchhiker's thumb. So down here. Uh, we've got some people, remember, uh, fourth finger longer is dominant. So right here, it says fourth finger shorter. That is the recessive version of this trait. Yeah, perfect. It says recessive beautifully and magically and clearly very legible. And we're homozygous for hitchhiker's thumb. That means you have the hitchhiker's thumb, which is also a recessive. So we'll just help you say RDC recessive. So we've got two traits. We should have four letters. Why don't we use F for fingers and T for thumbs? We've got the recessive version, uh, which is you know not what I have. We have the recessive version of fourth finger, so it's shorter, so it'd be little Fs. And then we're homozygous or hitchhiker's thumb, which is also recessive, so little T's for thumb. We could also use H for uh, for hitchhiker if you want to do so. Little Fs and little Hs. Either would be acceptable. Either would be acceptable. We're gonna go with Ts because they're clearly so much more legible than the Hs. All right. So here we are. We're we're homozygous for fourth finger longer. So we look back up here. Fourth finger longer. That's the dominant version. Of and heterozygous for a straight thumb. Again, straight thumb, that's the dominant version of this trait. Dominant version of the trait. So we got a homozygous fourth finger longer. So that's dominant. Homozygous dominant, that would be big F. Big F, right? Homozygous means same. These two are the same. And it's the dominant version, so they're the same, two big Fs. Heterozygous for a straight thumb, so capital T, lowercase t, right, because we are heterozygous for the straight thumb. That's, that's this right here, we're heterozygous for that, homozygous for the fourth finger. And when we write out two trait genotypes, we just we put them all together. We'll scroll on down. Let's talk about cats, city cats. Because there, there's cats out there. Um, my cat, who is uh, currently hiding, I'll see if I can get her here in a minute. Uh, we, whatever, you saw her for furry friends on Instagram yesterday. Uh, short hair is dominant. My cat has short hair, so that's dominant, which is nice because the long hair gets, gets a mess. And then there's also this condition that cats have called polydactyly. But they've got like an extra sixth weird uh, toe, like thumb looking thing coming out the side of their paw. That one is, um, that one's tough. Oh, here's, here's the cat. Now, uh, 
she's very evil and squirmy and probably going to bite me soon. But there she is. Look at, look at her. There is short fur. You'll notice. When you're going to pause there, she's got, oh, no, she's going to, she's going to stab me. She's got the normal number of toes. So she is, a, she's recessive, but normal number of toes. So this cat here is almost my cat. My cat's very beautiful. However, she's short hair, not long hair. She does have the normal number of toes. So I like to use P for polydactyly. Let's start here with the toes. It says here polydactyly. It's dominant. So if the normal number of toes, we have the recessive version of that trait. And long hair, uh, short hair is dominant. So long hair is also the recessive version of that trait. So if we've got a long-haired cat, we use lowercase little s's. I like to do them in cursive. That way you can tell the difference between little s's and big s's. And normal number of toes. So wait, that's that's a P. Why am I doing PS? Yeah, P for polydactyly. That's right, P for polydactyly. I'm losing my mind here, children. Right? Normal number of toes is recessive. Long hair is recessive. And then you just you put them together. Yes, you could totally use F for fur or H for hair. Those are also fine because short's the dominant one. I usually use S's. And then you'll see here we got big S, little S, big P, little P, T, S's, T's, S for short hair, P for polydactyly. Uh, what is the special name for this genotype? Again, because the two S's are different, the two P's are different. That is a heterozygous, heterozygous. Perfect and majestic. The phenotype. How is this cat going to look? This right here with the S's and P's, that's the genotype. Here where it's describing how the fur looks, that would be our phenotype. So how is this pretty cat going to look? Well, it's got big S, so we're dominant. So we have short hair or fur is what we usually call it on animals. So we say short hair, short haired cat. And it's got the extra toe that is called polydactyl. Oh, look, it's got a root. I'm trying to do an exclamation point. This one. Look, it's got a root word in it. Dactyl meaning toe, poly meaning many, alf, fun. So hopefully um, that sort of clears it up for some of us. But that's how you do uh, more than one trait. Uh, if we're still looking at Mendelian, still one gene per trait and you know all the Mendel's rules and effect segregation all that for more on how to actually do punnett squares with these you're going to have four by four crosses or watch the video 